Hi there, my name is Manny De Freitas. I'm the political head, the Member of Parliament for Johannesburg South. Those of you who know me and have been around in Johannesburg South will know that I've been around uh, as political head in the constituency since 1999. Um, and much has been achieved. We've, uh, for example, things that people have forgotten already. For example, the Moy Street on-ramp and off-ramp, which is now closed, thanks to the Zama Zamas. That was thanks to our councillors and myself pushing through to make sure that there was a direct link between the rest of the city and Johannesburg South, which was previously cut off. The various business rights that now exist running along the highway in front of the Glen Shopping Centre, for example, and many other developments that have taken place since 1999. All these things have taken place because we were fighting for our constituency, for our people in Johannesburg South. We now have at a point where people have, and they're consuming of news, are completely different from what it was before. Now people are consuming more on social media, online, through YouTube. And so we as a constituency, and I'm proud to say that we, as far as we know, are the first constituency of any party in South Africa, possibly even the world, to actually uh, do a podcast. We, you may find that it may be very amateurish, we're learning as we go along. We try and we will hopefully improve as we go along through the various episodes uh, progressing throughout each week. But we have uh, agreed as public representatives, myself and the councillors, that we're going to communicate more with our communities because people are now not reading newspapers anymore. Our television, our mainstream television and mainstream media, news and radio are very, very aligned to the ANC because they're too afraid to speak out and have alternative voices. And so I would welcome you to uh, write to us uh, and I would be particularly interested in hearing challenges, things that you may disagree with what we're talking about uh, and bring in your point of view. Uh, I don't want to only hear about you know, people agreeing with us uh, and how, uh, what our point of view is. I'd like to be challenged and so would our councillors who are incredibly hardworking. Uh, so, so please do uh, email us um, and we'll very happily uh, uh, provide feedback. But also we're interested in uh, challenging, challenging us, disagreeing with us, and also what are the kind of things you would like to see? What is the kind of content, content that you'd like to see in future podcasts? We don't want this to be a propaganda machine. We want this to be a machine about talking the truth, uh, to unpack the much confusion that exists out there. Uh, I'm also, as you know, know, many of you will know me well enough, going way back to 99. Uh, somebody the other day wrote to me and said they remember me and the late uh, uh, Linda Lewis, a good friend of mine. We became friends over many years, hardworking councillor that, uh, that joined us uh, in uh, the 2000 elections and became a councillor and served the uh, Joburg South constituency and her ward with great distinction for many years. I do want to honour her because she did great work and I want to honour our existing councillors. Uh, but you will find that I, as always, am not politically correct. I'm not going to necessarily say what you want to hear. I will tell you the truth. Um, and so, for, so what I found is that in all communities, uh, irrespective of demographic, in South Africa, uh, and even education level, most South Africans are very politically illiterate. Uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's not meant as an insult. It simply means that people are not informed enough and believe a lot of the nonsense that is out there, a lot of the, 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 the rubbish that a lot of the other parties spew. And so this isn't a, a party bashing, a other party bashing podcast, but it is a podcast that is going to produce the truth. And uh, if you don't believe what we say, go and research it. Go and find out for yourself and see if indeed we are lying or not telling the truth, and then come and challenge me with that. I can assure you we'll only tell the truth. Uh, uh, here. It's also not a complete uh, propaganda machine. That's not the objective. The objective is to make sure that we uh, provide information for Johannesburg Southerners and uh, make us proud to who, in the, in the context of a very difficult situation in Johannesburg, which is getting progressively worse thanks to bad policies, 
thanks to corruption, card redeployment. These are all things that are actually happening and for some reason people are afraid to talk about. We're going to talk about it and if you disagree with me, you disagree with our councillors who will be speaking, then I do uh, invite you to, to, to come and join us. Uh, you'll be seeing some clips which we pre-recorded a little bit earlier uh, and uh, we're trying to make this podcast as interesting as possible so that you will come back more and more and uh, if you like what we have to see and if you disagree and if you get angry or you dislike what we have to see, come back anyway. Be challenged and uh, register, sign on and encourage friends, family and everyone around you to uh, register and sign on and join us in this podcast so that uh, they too get informed. Even people from other, uh, even people who affiliate and support other parties, be very welcome to come and uh, challenge us, talk to us about issues of the day. But we're going to be very local, where where issues do impact us uh, on us, uh, national issues impact us nationally uh, and locally in Joburg South. We will be talking about it, but we won't necessarily be talking about the national issues unless there is a specific request. But we will always have the, uh, the angle as to how does it affect the residents of Joburg South. So I hope you're going to be enjoying uh, the first podcast. You've got to excuse our technical glitches. You've got to excuse our perhaps amateurish way we're doing things. But we're learning as we go along because no other constituency has done this. We don't have a budget that can spend a huge amount on, on, on a big team. We are doing this all on our own and trying to do the best we can by communicating with you uh, so that you are informed easily and quickly. So by way of introduction as our first podcast, uh, we're introducing our councillors, a brief introduction, and throughout the next weeks, we will then be unpacking each of the councillors, the wards, what they're up to, uh, but for this podcast, we're doing introductions into your councillor, which you may not know, and uh, take note of uh, uh, your councillor, uh, because he or she is there and available to work for you. So we recorded a little bit earlier, we recorded the uh, some interviews uh, into each of these councillors, so let's have a look. I am Theresa Chain, and um, I am from Johannesburg, originally. I live in the south of Johannesburg now for nearly 30 years and this is my home. Um, I'm a mother, I'm a grandmother and I'm someone's daughter as well. Born and bred, councillor of Ward 56. I went to school in, in Ward 56 at a local school down the road at Burnett College. Um, I've grown up here and I am the people's champion. I'm here to fight for the issues of my areas and not a day goes by where I'm not fighting for people. I'm Rashina Landis from Port Elizabeth, originally, from a beautiful city. I'm now in Hanover for over 50 years. So you're a Joburger now? I'm a Joburger now. I've got two beautiful kids. I've got four grandkids and two girls left in the And I'm a counselor for the DA Travis. And Solomon Naila is a Joburger to start with. I live in Ward 23 um, in the city of Johannesburg. I set up for to live there and for there or Lavin is in the usual. I am a DA councillor, um, a proportional representation councillor here, and um, assigned to the two wards as you have um, um, correctly referred to, uh, Ward um, 68 um, in Jordan, and um, here in the Hi, I'm Stuart Murray, South African citizen. I, I grew up in the south of Joburg. I'm just over 60 years old and I love my job. And what is your job? I am the ward councillor for Ward 54. My name is Ward Tarot, my name is the South since 1984. I've schooled here at Townsend Primary School, Forest High School. I do my buying and shopping in the south. I'm the son of the south and I'm very proud of South to my heart. Uh, Matsubani Siku is a single dad, but very community orientated. He loves being hands on, you know, understanding how the municipality works and how do uh, officials do their work so that, you know, in such a way uh, I understand how can we fight for civil rights for our people. 
though many of you may know, one of our councillors, Ward Councillor for Ward 23, Tyrell Myers, uh, was the Chief Whip of Council under the previous coalition administration of Johannesburg under Mayor Mpo Palazzi. So he has extra insight and in-depth personal knowledge into the coalition at the time and the goings on. And so earlier on, I uh, interviewed Tyrell Myers. Let's see what he says. The residents quite rightly are very confused at what's going on. The city has been a laughing stock and it wasn't really happening. You'd think it's a Monty Python movie, if you ask me. It's, it's, it's every uh, other day there's a new mayor coming in and then a, a party comes in and then gets voted out. It's a total mess. Now, it hasn't only happened in Joburg. We're going to be focusing in Joburg because we're focusing on our areas. But uh, it, the same happened in Trani. Uh, it took a while to eventually stabilise Nelson Mandela Bay and many other municipalities where coalitions weren't working and uh, what the problem was. Now before, I've got Tyrell Myers, he was one of our councillors, but it was also the chief whip of council when Mpo Palazzi was our mayor and when the DA-led coalition was running the city. And we'll be talking about that in a minute, but what I do want to say is that coalitions, people are saying coalitions don't work. Coalitions work. Uh, and I remind people that when we won Cape Town in 2006 uh, under Mayor Helen Ziller, that was a coalition and it worked. It never been done before. It was the first time that any government had formed a coalition in South Africa and it worked. It worked very well. The difference in vote was one. And so it was a very, very tight margin. And uh, the mayor at the time made it work and look where Cape Town is today. Because once a city takes over and residents see that the, the DA difference, and in, in, in Cape Town that was definitely the case, from a bankrupt city that Cape Town was at the time, there was talks about a corrupt V&A waterfront deal, there was uh, uh, money, uh, story about money being stolen and all sorts of other things in Cape Town. They were even talking about Seapoint becoming Cape Town's Hillbrow. Uh, so, and crime was rampant and so forth. So as soon as the Zilla administration took over, uh, things started to work, even in a coalition. So coalitions can work, uh, but it also depends on your coalition partners, which are the kind of things I'll be talking to Tyrell about in a minute. What is it in Johannesburg and in certain other areas that the coalitions weren't working and that they really collapsed? And so to unpack this, uh, Tyrell, welcome once again. Yep. Tell us chronologically from the beginning, I was there, you were surprised after the last elections to pleasantly surprised to get voted in with Mpo Palazzi as our mayor, who did a sterling job under her mayorship. She did a fantastic job and really started changing things around. But what happened? What went wrong that she lost the mayorship and where we are in the state right now where the latest mayor has resigned and we now actually mail us at the moment. So just tell us what, going back from the beginning. Well, just going back to what you said earlier on, Manny. First of all, coalitions do work, I agree with you. They do work if they're based on principle and not position. And that's exactly why the coalition in Johannesburg failed. You had a coalition partner that is made up of eight seats, namely in the Patriotic Alliance, that pulled out. And they were from the word go saying they're not interested in our principles. In fact, I even heard that they threw the book on the floor. They said so, they said that, yes. And that they were only interested in positions and that they were only prepared to stay in this coalition if they were given another position, another MMC portfolio position. So the thing is, coalitions will work on principle if they are based on those principles and if other parties are also committed to those principles. But if they're going to be based on positions, it's not going to work and we can see exactly what's happening now. But now let's just step back. I mean, you're, you're talking about present history. What happened months back when Paul Palazzi was voted out? What caused that? What, what got us to this situation? Because from my perspective, and perhaps I'm biased, I probably am, I think we were doing a really good job. Joe was being revived, was being fixed again. We were rolling back on the problems and trying to get things done under her leadership. What happened? Why would somebody have voted her out? Well, many I must agree with you. Uh, we were certainly doing a wonderful job. It certainly wasn't easy. We were in the process of cleaning up the administration. The administration is rotten. It still is rotten. That is a process and it will take many years. But the city was on the right track. And I think also what happens is that Sometimes because you're on the right track and because you're doing the right thing, it becomes a trick to others. And others so they don't want you to do the right thing. Yeah. Okay. So they don't want you to do the right thing, they actually want you to fail. Um, and there's an opportunity there for them to create their own deals, etc. Yeah. Um, you know, we like I said earlier on, the Patriotic Alliance obviously wanted another position. 
and they wanted to reconfigure the whole coalition and we're saying no hold on guys we can't just do that there's a process to be followed you know things are going quite well as it is you know we need to come back together at a later stage and we look at the coalition but they weren't prepared to do that and of course you know if, if parties are determined to bring about better service delivery they wouldn't have supported the motion of confidence against the corporate party because she wasn't doing a fantastic job. No. The city was starting to come right. Yes, service delivery was not where it should have been. And I can accept that. That's all of the two years yeah. back. back uh, but we were starting to get some. We were yeah. starting to find all different things that were going on behind the city. I mean, there were services that hadn't been paid in years. There were a lot of things broken in the city. Even my own office as the chief work. Um, you know, some of the, we hadn't even followed the staff compliments. Mm -hmm. We had an organogram that wanted to cater for about 81 people. That's far too much. Right. So we shrunk that. You know, and then some of the money that we saved there must go into service delivery. That was some of the things that we were trying to do. And I don't think the ANC liked that because the thing is, it now treads on their toes. It's now fit to them and it's fit to their empires and their networks that they built in the city. And the cadres that were deployed to the cities would lose their jobs. Absolutely. And they are part of the problem of this network of corruption. Absolutely. Exactly. Even in the legislature office, mm -hmm. where the speaker uh, manages the, the legislature, there were staff that actually had a farewell party for Vasca. They were actually celebrating his demands. Right. This means that you have got a captured legislature of, of staff that are actually serving a political party, not the interests of the city and the citizens itself. Now, doesn't this go to the root of the problems of Joburg and all these other uh, cities? That the, the whole cadre deployment policy of the ANC is the root of all these problems. Absolutely. Uh, because because it's, the, it's the membership your, your party membership that matters and not the fact that you are a qualified engineer or a committed official that just wants to do their job. Absolutely. Um, this is not about uh, what's best for the, city, for the citizens. This is what's best for certain individuals and their interests and how they protect their interests and how they protect their empires within the city. Right. So it becomes a whole closed network. It becomes a whole area of gatekeeping. And this is why things are, are tend to be stifled because also this network tends to overlap into other networks and it's territorial and the things, things clash and the things don't get done in the city. Right. One of the secret hidden gems of Joburg South uh, is a statue that many of us possibly drive past on a daily basis unaware of right here by the Glen shopping center statue of uh, Vasco da Gama depicting the rich Portuguese heritage that we have in Johannesburg South the most probably the most concentrated area of Portuguese people Portuguese immigrants and Luso descendants as well both in the, what we call the old and the new south and we have our statue of Vasco da Gama uh, possibly a tourist attraction uh, in the future uh, another reason to be proud of Johannesburg South with our diversity and unity in South Africa yesterday morning Joe Burgers woke up with a terrible news about a massive fire that took place in Marshalltown in Ward 124 uh, the numbers keep on increasing, uh, the numbers of deaths and people injured, and it's a very sad state of affairs. Uh, we've had uh, our leadership, city leadership there on site, as well as our allocated councillor to Ward 124 to see what's going on and see what needs to be done. Uh, it's a very sad state because it talks to the lack of maintenance, lack of law and order, sanitation, overcrowding, and this is, these are the issues that need to be addressed. These are the basic bread and butter issues that a city should be uh, dealing with. And so it's a great uh, sadness and we are doing what we can. So we uh, hold those families who've lost loved ones uh, in our thoughts and prayers. But uh, let's see what our colleagues had to say when they visited the site. Good morning residents of Johannesburg, it's Councillor Belinda Kaiser at Chazanjoku. I'm the DA caucus leader in the city of Johannesburg. We are on the scene where this fire took, uh, took place. I'm here with Councillor Michael Sun, who's the DA Shadow MMC for uh, Public Safety. Uh, it's quite disheartening to see that this is exactly where we did the integrated operations uh, in the in the just before uh, January 20, 
2023 and uh, it's very very sad uh, to see that uh, that had stopped and people's lives have now been uh, lost through this uh, if uh, these integrated operations have continued happening the officials would have picked up that there's a problem i'm going to give councillor sun an opportunity it is really unfortunate that we are standing on the corner of Dalva and Albert Street in Marshalltown, uh, Joburg CBD. The confirmed uh, body count is now currently standing at 60. Mm. I've just spoken to our EMS officials. Unfortunately, they are still searching in that building. Behind the fire engine are all the bodies lying. And mm. It is so un unnecessary and tragic that this has to happen. We're here to make sure that uh, the officials do their work mm. and we'll keep our residents updated. Yeah, and also we will be inquiring why those integrated operations have stopped because it could have been picked up and uh, we just want to send our condolences to all the lives and the families that have lost their lives and we will be reporting back, like Councillor Sun says, to be able to give more updates. Thanks. Good morning, residents of Ward 124. This is uh, Councillor Solomon Raida, the DAPR councillor responsible for this report. Uh, this morning we woke up to the news of a raging fire uh, in Marshall Town, where about 73 people have since perished um, um, in the building right behind me. We thought we should come and um, uh, see for ourselves what, what actually transpired. Um, our condolences to the families of the affected um, victims and uh, we do not know at this stage as to what the cause of the fire is and the investigation into the fire um, will be conducted soon to determine what actually happened. We will keep you updated um, of the developments uh, in that regard. Thanks very much. Thank you for joining us at our very first podcast episode. Hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Please do write to us, provide us criticisms, as, uh, suggestions, ideas, uh, support. What are the kind of things you would like to see on our podcast? And we'd want to make it as entertaining as, and as informative as possible. So till next time, uh, God bless and all the best till next time. My name is Manny De Freitas.